Hey guys, Dr. Cool here, and in today's video we're talking about the subject of glyphosate and really the 30-year Frankenstein food, GMO food experiment that's been perpetrated upon the American people and the health effects, what's been done to our health over the past three decades here right now. So I'm um, starting out, if you've never heard of the term glyphosate before, glyphosate is an herbicide. It's the active ingredient in the weed killer Roundup. So if you've ever been to Home Depot or Lowe's and you bought Roundup to kill your weeds, glyphosate is the active herbicide weed killing ingredient in Roundup. Little side note, we're talking about health today, but glyphosate and Roundup in general uh, has major biological impacts upon our earth as well. It's poisoning underground water supplies and groundwater. Uh, it's one of the major reasons for why the bees and the butterflies are disappearing. Uh, bird and bug populations are affected as well. So, you know, I'll get off my soapbox here for that in a minute. But if you use those sprays, uh, you know, find another alternative. How is this affecting our health though? So, uh, in the 1990s, big agriculture began uh, genetically modifying seeds, mostly in corn, canola, and soybean plants. Uh, the reason why they would genetically modify a seed, yes, it does increase yields, what we're told, uh, but they, they'll, they'll mess with the genes in the plants so that they can spray mass amounts of glyphosate, the herbicide, over all these big crops, and the weeds will die, but now the genetically modified corn and soybeans will still live. Understand, Glyphosate, we said, is an herbicide. It should kill herbs and foliage. If you take organic corn or organic soybeans and you spray it with the weed killer Roundup, if you spray it with glyphosate, it's going to die. When they mess with the genes and, like I said, create these Frankenstein-type foods, which is the majority of all the processed foods in America today, corn and soy and canola, uh, these are in everything. Read our ingredient labels here. When they messed with the genes of these plants, now they can go and spray mass amounts of glyphosate over all these crops. The weeds will die that would grow in the field, but the corn and the soybeans, those things still live. Those crops do not die. As a result, when these things are harvested, we are getting mass amounts of glyphosate residues concentrated uh, in the American diet, and it's been ever increasing since the, since the 1990s. Uh, they estimate that 75 to 90% of all processed food, meaning fast food, junk food, anything that comes in a box, a wrapper, a package, or a bag, uh, <clears throat> if it contains corn, soybean, uh, canola, or even wheat too. Wheat is technically not genetically modified. It is hybridized and the process that they take wheat through is I believe the biggest reason for why people can't tolerate wheat today. But glyphosate is still applied to wheat today. Uh, when they harvest wheat, if the wheat is still green and it's not ready to harvest yet, hey, no problem, they'll simply take the tractors, spray the glyphosate over all that, the wheat will begin to die, and then they can harvest it sooner too. So everything contains wheat, corn, soybeans, soybean oil, soy protein, canola oil, hydrogenated soy oil. So all of these uh, processed foods, if you read your ingredient labels, you're gonna see this in there. High fructose, corn, syrup, corn, oil. So we cannot get away from these things. Uh, as a result, I'm gonna get ready and hop on my computer in a minute and we're gonna look over some of the uh, peer-reviewed medical studies. These aren't Dr. Cole's stats. These aren't some like natural stats out there from natural websites, although you should be visiting those sites. Um, but no, these are in the peer-reviewed journals and in the medical literature about what's been done to our health from stats uh, provided by the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, and the CDC. So uh, we're going to see in a minute just the major health implications in regards to gut health, gluten sensitivity, autism, Parkinson's, thyroid, diabetes, all these chronic health conditions that just rose epidemically after the introduction of GMO foods in the 90s. So today, if we fast forward, this video is in 2019, it's estimated that 95% plus, meaning it might be greater than that, 95% of all corn, soybean, canola crops are GMO. Most wheat out there is hybridized, it's called dwarf wheat, and the majority of that dwarf wheat uh, they apply glyphosate to that too. Uh, this is a growing topic. You might have even seen this in the news recently where your children's cereal and a lot of breakfast bars and most of the big products that we see out there, people are becoming wise to this because it's been going on so long that now it's actually even in the news for cancer rates as well. You might see uh, some attorney's commercials on or things. If you've been exposed to glyphosate uh, because it causes cancer among another um, among many other uh, chronic health conditions too. So hang on, I'm going to go hop in front of my computer and we're going to look at some of these trends and what's been done since the 90s. And if you have symptoms, this may be a major culprit. Why? So hang on, be right back. 
All right, so we're back, and what we're going to be looking at here are just a couple different slides that are going to show graphs of uh, GMO food production increasing through the 90s, uh, the, uh, the increase along with the GMO foods of glyphosate being applied to all these crops, and then we're going to look at certain chronic health conditions and their rises that go right along with the glyphosate use uh, beginning in the 1990s when GMO foods were first introduced. So um, for each one of these things, you will see a timeline at the bottom, You'll see uh, different bar graphs here, and then you'll see a line of glyphosate spray increase as we go through each one of them. Uh, this journal here is from the Journal of uh, Organic Systems, 2014. So, you know, many of these conditions have gotten worse since that time. And what we're looking at this first one, it says hospital discharge rates, or hospital discharge diagnosis uh, of inflammatory bowel disease. That would be Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, these inflammatory bowel diseases. The yellow bar graphs, those are the discharge rates of Crohn's and ulcerative colitis beginning in 1990. And the red line here, this is the use of glyphosate sprayed to our corn and soy crops. Um, if you look here, the sources, USDA, that's where we get the glyphosate uh, stats from, the United States Department of Agriculture. And then the disease stats come from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. So we'll match up the crops, we'll match up the condition, and we'll look at each one of these and, uh, you know, I, I think it's hard to look at these without saying there's an absolute connection here between the chronic diseases that we see today and what's been done to our foods beginning in the 1990s. So, again, uh, first slide here, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis absolutely rises right along with the red line of glyphosate use here. If we go to the next slide, this is celiac. Celiac is another GI-based condition. It's a, it's a condition where people are very, uh, they cannot tolerate gluten anymore, very gluten sensitive. Um, I believe a lot of that is glyphosate toxic, not just simply gluten sensitivity, because glyphosate is used in the harvesting of all wheat plants, which is, or the majority of wheat plants, which is where gluten is found within predominantly. And so again, hey, if you're, if you're like watching this and you're 50 or 60 years old, when you were growing up, did anybody have nut allergies or gluten sensitivities or casein uh, allergies to milk? No, all these food allergies and sensitivities really began when we started changing the genes in the seeds and applying glyphosate to all the crops. So uh, again, if I pull up my cursor here, this is hospital discharge diagnosis of celiac disease beginning in 1990. The yellow bar graph, this is the incidence of celiac diagnoses in America. And then the black line here is the glyphosate being applied to wheat. Again, sources USDA and the CDC. We can keep going with this. This one here says uh, instead the, the bars and the black line are inverted here. This time the yellow is the glyphosate sprayed on wheat. And the black line is deaths due to intestinal infections. So. Uh, a big thing that I always am talking on and we work with in our clients is gut health. And glyphosate absolutely destroys your microbiome. It destroys your immune system. It destroys the good gut bacteria called flora uh, inside of your GI tract. And as, as a result, when you start damaging the microbiome and losing those healthy, healthy intestinal bacteria flora, uh, you are just open and subject to a lot of infections, diseases, uh, things like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and celiac, all these digestive and autoimmune issues uh, <clears throat> have increased uh, significantly since the use of glyphosate. So again, we track these things. The black line is deaths due to intestinal infections. The yellow bars this time are the glyphosate being sprayed on the corn and soy crops. Uh, let's look at some non-GI based things, but absolutely connects back to the gut because everything does. And this one here is autism. So autism, I don't believe it's any one thing. I don't think it's only glyphosate. I think it's a convergence of many toxic sources in 21st century America. But if we look at what began happening in the 90s, the late 20th century, we see that all of these yellow bars begin to increase here. Uh, that's the autism rates. And then the red line is a glyphosate being sprayed on all the corn and soy crops. So again, um, you know, peer reviewed study, peer reviewed medical journal, red line, glyphosate, yellow bars, autism rates. They go right along with each other. Uh, let's look at some thyroid cancer rates for a minute. We see a lot of thyroid in our practice too. It shows in this graph, I really like this one because in the green line here, this shows the trend of thyroid cancer rates prior to 1990. So prior to the introduction of GMO crops and glyphosate being sprayed on those crops. It's a flat line. There was no increase of that trend prior to 1990. 
If we look at the yellow bars here are the incidence of thyroid cancer that beginning in the 90s, once glyphosate began to be sprayed, uh, it's like an exponential J curve here. It goes straight up, and then we have two different colors here. The red is glyphosate applied to corn and soy. The blue is the percentage of crops, corn and soy crops, that are now genetically modified. So the more the crops are GMO, the more they require glyphosate. And so as you see here, this is from, uh, it ends in 2009. So this study is literally from a decade ago. Look at this blue line up here. It's close to 90% back then. It's over 95% now. Uh, the percentage of crops, corn and soy, that are now GMO. So thyroid majorly affected by glyphosate sprayed to the crops. Um, if we look here, renal disease, kidney disease. Again, pretty much flatlining before the 90s. Once we hit the mid 90s and the early 2000s, as glyphosate use in GMO crops explode, kidney disease explodes. Renal disease deaths, kidney disease deaths. And your kidneys do what? They filter. Glyphosate is a water soluble toxin. So your kidneys and your liver play major roles in filtering out toxins, the, the biggest roles in your body of filtering out toxins. And if there's a constant onslaught of glyphosate, it's going to affect how your kidneys function. Uh, we look at Parkinson's, same thing. Parkinson's was already on the rise. I believe there are many toxic sources that can drive uh, Parkinson's increased rates. But if we look here, uh, once the GMO crops were introduced in the 90s, these yellow bars far exceed this green line trend, which was the pre-1990 trend. Again, these things, uh, you know, there's a correlation here between them. The final one is diabetes. Diabetes began to get really bad in the 80s. It's quadrupled since then. Uh, in the 80s, it was strictly due to how much sugar Americans were eating, the sugars and the grains. And there was an increase in the green line here. Uh, the pre-1990 trend was increasing. However, diabetes isn't only a sugar issue. It's not only people who are eating too much sugar. It's the toxins in our food too. It's the, it's the genes that have been triggered from eating GMO foods for over 30 years now. And if we look at diabetes rates in these yellow bars here, um, and then the, the percentage of crops in the blue, and then the glyphosate, or actually in this one, the percentage of crops is in the red, and the glyphosate sprayed on the crops is in the blue, diabetes absolutely exploded with the introduction of GMO crops in all of our wheat plants, the dwarf wheat being sprayed with glyphosate too. Um, wrapping up here, you know, all these pictures, they're from two medical journals, the Journal of Interdisciplinary Toxicology in 2013 and the Journal of Neurology International 2015. So uh, again, I hope these are, are very helpful and eye-opening at showing you that if you have some of these chronic illnesses and conditions right now, why it's absolutely imperative that you must get the processed food, you must get the glyphosate, you must get the GMO foods out of your diet if you're going to give your body a chance to heal. If you would like to learn more, I've done an entire webinar on this topic, on gut health, on the things that are driving some of the digestive diseases today, and then some of the things that I take my clients through in a step-by-step -step process to help them regain their gut health as well. So I will have the link below this video. Simply click that. You can watch the webinar for free without entering your email. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to push the Facebook Messenger button. Uh, I respond to all those personally. And uh, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, just go to our website. I'll have the link below and uh, send me uh, any messages there too. So hey, share this video with your friends on Facebook, on YouTube. You know, people need to hear this information. There are probably so many people in your circle of friends and family that, that are sick and have symptoms that don't know why. So push the like button, push the share button on this right now. And uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Have a great day.